Welcome to the British Horse Society. We're delighted to welcome Professor Derek Nottenbelt, one of our most popular speakers, to our annual members meeting at British Horse Society headquarters today. Derek's expertise is in equine internal medicine and he's renowned both nationally and internationally. So Derek, tell us a bit more about your career to date. Uh, I'm currently retired uh, to two part-time jobs. Firstly, um, I'm doing a consultancy at, at Glasgow University and secondly, I'm remaining at Liverpool University where I've been for the last 23 years, um, plodding my way through lots and lots of cases and doing some interesting things and visiting across the world. So um, I'm very interested, always have been very interested in, in horse medicine uh, and, uh, and I think well, maybe we've made a bit of a difference over the years. I think that's the best that can be said for it. So tell us a bit more about what you'll be talking to our members about today at the annual members meeting. Today I'm, go I'm going to try and, and uh, talk about responsible breeding of horses and the welfare implications for it. And that could be viewed from both sides. It could be viewed from an irresponsible angle with the welfare implications that are bad news, or it could be viewed from the positive angle where we say responsible breeding leads to better quality of horse. So that's the message I'm going to try and get across and we'll use some examples of the kind of things that can happen when things go wrong and the kind of things that can happen when things go right because there's a positive side to everything. And Eric, what do you feel is the single biggest welfare issue facing British horses today? I think the biggest single issue that faces British horses today um, really is the irresponsible or the casual owner. I, I think there's a serious implication from that because it creates a glut of horses that become unwanted in due course. They, there are welfare issues associated with their care and their, and their um, uh, management from it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think if we could educate the casual owner, the new owner, into their genuine responsibility, uh, then I think we would we'd crack a lot of the major welfare concerns that we have. It leads to disaster. It, uh, it always leads to disaster if people, I mean, it happens in a car. If you buy a car and you're not licensed to drive it, it's a disaster, isn't it? And, and so here's the same thing. It's exactly the same. Only this time we're dealing with a horse, which is a living creature. And there are implications from the safety angle. There are implications from the welfare perspective. Every single thing seems to me to depend heavily upon the casual or irresponsible owner. So you touched on there on the importance of being informed. At a grassroots level, what do you think the average horse owner or enthusiast could do to promote and protect equine welfare? In order to improve welfare, I think the average horse owner, the average new horse owner, the average less informed horse owner should just join the BHS. That's the best thing of all, of course. Then they need to take uh, account of the, of the opportunities to educate and learn and to take part, to make a contribution towards the overall benefit of the horse in terms of its welfare because welfare and knowledge, I'm afraid, are completely integrally involved. There's no way that you're going to separate one from the other. So they have to get involved and they have to learn from what's all the courses and all the training that's uh, available. Uh, and then I think a lot of the problems would probably be solved. It's just that they don't come out, you know, they don't come out of the woodwork and, and they don't join and they think that they can go to the supermarket and buy a horse and then that'll or be, and get a book from the pet shop and it, it'll be okay, but it isn't. Uh, they need to have a background organisation. Now, the British Horse Society has a scheme called Friends at the End, which is designed to make sure that no horse owner has to go through the loss of their equine companion alone. It helps owners make choices and crucially, it supports them in taking the difficult decision to have their equine companion put to sleep. What do you think of the scheme? It's an outstanding initiative because there's no doubt that the horse does not think of tomorrow. So from, uh, at the point where the horse is going to be put down, we don't need to worry about the horse. Of course, we want the putting down to be the best possible way and we have to be comfortable with that. But we don't have to worry about the horse. He doesn't have a concept of tomorrow. He doesn't have a concept of, oh, I must have a holiday in the Bahamas before I finally die. That's entirely a human sentiment. So the euthanasia of a horse at the end of its useful life or 
even if it's not at the end of its useful life for other reasons, uh, managemental reasons, behavioral reasons, whatever, you know, it, it's, it's a human sentiment uh, and therefore it is the humans involved that need the support. It's no good cuddling the horse, he doesn't understand what you're cuddling him for, he doesn't know that in 10 minutes time or 3 minutes or even 1 minute he's going to be in some other pasture somewhere else. Um, so it's the owners and the, and, and, and the support people who need the support to, to remember not the grotty day at the end because you shouldn't remember the bad day. You, you, that will be maximal in your mind at the time it happens. But within a week or two, you'll smile, you know, you'll remember the time that, you know, John stood on your foot and didn't let go, you know, and, 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 and the time he put you in a ditch when you'd fallen off something because he was bucking for joy, you know. And these are the good things about horse ownership. You know, the relationship between mankind and the horse is extremely close, but it's more for mankind, I think, than it is for the horse. And it's that introduces the welfare side of it again, and so it takes us full circle, really. Derek, thank you very much for your time today. It's a real pleasure, and I hope they enjoy it. To see more of Derek and hear the rest of his talk from this afternoon, visit the members-only area on our website. <laughs>